recording. Okay. Welcome. You ready? Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some trimming happening here. Oh, there is. <laughs> we don't need to trim. Okay. Scott, thank you so much for being our guest speaker for September for our group. We're really grateful to have you here. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm grateful to be here and, and love, love hanging out with you guys. So thank you. Yeah, we're excited. Angus is especially happy. He yeah. always has fun with you. Scott is a dear friend and I always have so much fun. And, and, <laughs> and, and also, you know, he, he's, he's uh, a very, very adept at dispensing wisdom. So I always feel excited on that front too. Yes. There's a lot, there's a lot to learn in between the space of his considerable humor that, that feels a lot like wisdom. <laughs> Yeah. So for those of you who don't know Scott Kelly, he is a health and vitality expert. He is also a good friend of ours. But the reason that we're having him on for this month is that I thought it would be a really great time to look at the area of health. Uh, I think the fall is a notorious time of year where health can go on the decline. Angus has always said that um, that period is from Halloween onwards starts oh, to right. things yeah, can yeah, start yeah, to yeah. go south. So I just thought it would be nice to really uh, just have his wisdom, not just about health, but about vitality, about the relationship between that connection with that innate self, our true nature and health, which Scott, I think, speaks to um, just so beautifully because it is all connected and isn't just about um, what supplements to take or what diet to eat. It's far simpler and also far more profound than that and i think um you're you've been a great guide along the way for us on that front thank you thank you yeah i was i was thinking of that guy that that uh, we knew a naturopath years ago when we first came to la and it kind of sort of this is not how he articulated it, but he was kind of suggesting that i think the full period for him was like his atm machine that's when he would make his most money <laughs> <laughs> because it, it would start with Halloween and not only the kids, but the parents would go home and wolf down all those candies. Yeah. And then they would be quickly followed by Thanksgiving. And then by the time Christmas came, everybody had the flu in his mind because their immune system had been so shot to pieces by all that sugar. This was his theory anyway. But he said that, yeah, you know, that, that's really, that was his cash cow. Everybody having the flu as a result yeah. of all that intake. Mm -hmm. well, that that is, is, it, it, eating. It's funny you say that, Angus. Years ago, I did, a, I, I did a radio show and we were talking about how there's this interval that starts around Halloween that just goes and goes and you have Christmas and then you have, uh, you have the, the holiday season, then you have New Year's and then you come out of that and then you, start, then you move into Valentine's Day. I mean, you, I mean <laughs> <laughs> and then Easter. <laughs> then, you, then you have Easter and, and then it just keeps rolling and rolling. So there's, I mean, when is there an opportunity to have health? Exactly. It's <laughs> true. When's there a, when is there a respite? <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, I'm really excited for this conversation. And Scott, I would um, love to hear more about your your philosophy regarding vitality and, and health, because I was definitely one of those people that, and I still have a whole bunch of supplements on the counter, I'm just not taking them currently, but I was one of those people that would go to the functional medical doctor and leave with, you know, the, there would be the bill for the doctor, but then there would be the bill for the supplements, which was usually three or four times the amount of what the bill for the doctor was. And one time I went to the doctor, this was- I can't years. wait to jump in and give this the proper perspective, <laughs> but I'll let you finish. <laughs> this is several years ago. <laughs> and I went to um, pick up the supplements from the office and and I, or I wasn't able to, and Angus was gonna pick them up for me. And I told them that they couldn't tell how much they cost. <laughs> I said, please don't give him the bill. I'm going to pay over the phone. Because <laughs> I thought you would fall over. I'm sure I would have done. But anyway, so I'm one of those. Yeah, so there is a, there is a place on the kitchen counter, which over the years became the sort of de designated supplement area. So I just, I just don't like things just being left out. So I just kind of, it would irk me that there were these bottles of supplements. So I finally said to Rahini, no, can we just put them in some sort of container so that it just at least like late kind of has some sense of feel like they're being put away after use. So she says, sure, you know, knock yourself out, I guess on that front. 
So I think we, I think we're three container, <laughs> containers later. At some point, it's going to be a shipping container. At some point, the whole kitchen is going to be just a cupboard for supplements. <laughs> it started off, you know, with this little package in the corner, and it's just growing and growing and growing. <laughs> but that's that. So I don't understand why they just don't get thrown away. Well, it's kind of like they just, they just keep on appearing. Well, why they're not getting thrown away? It's like a city of supplements <laughs> on the kitchen counter. <laughs> For the most part, I think why they're not getting thrown away is that I stopped taking most of them. So I probably should throw them away because I'm not taking them, but it feels like I shouldn't throw them away. Mm. I don't know. That's why they're not going away because I, I sh I've been listening to Scott. Yeah, I guess this could become a recovery conversation. <laughs> going on here? Is this an intervention that this I didn't is, know This about? is one big grand intervention. That's right. Yeah, this, that's what this meeting is all about, really. <laughs> Can I hear Scott? Yes, I'm so sorry. I went off yeah. on a massive tangent there. Well, you know, I, mean, first of all, I love, I love the, your whole rewilding concept and, and the direction that that points in because it really, um, from a health perspective, it really points to what's ultimately true about health and being human and vitality and, you know, I think in a way, your supplement story is an innocent way in which we've kind of moved to the domestication of, of health. We try to domesticate and control health through pills and medication, forgetting the fact that, that we literally evolved by nature, through nature, and, and connection with nature. And when we when we forget that, then we start to look outside of ourselves for these um, concoctions and things. And I'm not saying there isn't a place for them. So I want to be clear on that. I'm just saying that, 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 that the word supplement means to supplement, to, to literally add to, not to be the primary front runner. And so um, when it comes to health and it comes to vitality, for me, it's really about pointing to what is already true. About, about the human being, what's already true and working within us that wants to come through. And what are all the innocent ways that we step in the way and, and block those things? And most of the time, we don't even realize we're doing it. I mean, when it comes to, I mean, it, to be honest with you, it's challenging being human anymore. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, in, in California right now, the, all the smoke and, and ne never mind all the chemicals and things in the air that we breathe, never mind that inside our houses we have all kinds of challenges. Um, so it is being, it, it is being, it's more difficult to be human, but it doesn't mean that we have to domesticate the, the, the part of us that is wild, that is vital, that is adaptive, that that is creative, that is resilient, and we can allow that to come through. And what I like to say is like, if we can allow it to lead, we can have uh, a far more enjoyable life with the experience that we're having in this body. So that's kind of where I stand on that. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. Yeah. So, so, but when, when you're talking about supplements, one of the challenges I think that we also have in that realm is that it looks really simple, right? And it looks like, um, like it's the answer. It's the quick fix thing. And, and, um, and to some degree that can be true. It can be really helpful, but I just want to make sure that when I'm pointing in that direction, that the foundation of health, the foundation and the orientation or the direction that we're looking in is really what does the heavy lifting. And ultimately supplements work really well in a body that is, uh, that is calm, that is quiet, that is receptive. Um, and, and if we can allow that foundation to happen first, then we can do wonderful things with food and we can do wonderful things with supplements. So it, it's really this kind of multi-pronged approach, but ultimately it's normal, natural, and biological, and we're, and we're designed for it. That's great. I love that. And in terms of that foundation, right, because that, that seems like that's the key piece, 
what is it that um, you see around supporting people with that foundation? Well, I think the first thing is, is if we all do an inventory and, and just kind of get a sense of um, how at ease are we? Um, what's, our, what's our love relationship with life? Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of gives us a sense of how, how at ease we are. And, you know, I think that's kind of the first, the first place to look. If I'm really stirred up, if I'm feeling really anxious and I'm feeling really agitated, the first place I'm going to look is to my understanding, to the, the depth at which I see where my experience is coming from. And uh, I think perhaps now more than ever, it could be a, a really stirred up time um, in people's minds, given all that's going on. And so it's very easy to kind of feel that agitation. But it doesn't mean that we can't feel peace of mind, and it doesn't mean that we can't feel that piece of physiology, um, even though the outside world is a little bit stirred up and chaotic right now. Mm -hmm. We still have that capacity. That is an innate built-in capacity that is unconditional. And so the foundation to health and well-being and vitality is literally, in my opinion, is, is that's kind of the keystone. When we can see that for ourselves, then we could be more easily directed from within to see what would be helpful in the realm of food, in the realm of supplements, in the realm of relationships, in the realm of just relating with, with life in general. And so that's kind of the first place I look is, 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 um, is what is my, what is my kind of love, my love connection with life right now? And, um, and I start there. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah, no, it is. It is beautiful. Um, I was thinking of a conversation that we had at one point about how, you know, you were saying, that we can kind of learn to listen to our body. And I think that this is, this is something that's close to home for me because I went, you know, I had many years of, of a health condition, which actually ended up being a misdiagnosis, but it was a, 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 a pretty severe health condition. So I was constantly aware, constantly looking for that condition to sort of appear or emerge. So I became very attuned to sort of my body in a sense, in terms of, what does this condition look like? How will it manifest itself? So it's, you know, it was a nervous condition. It was, you know, I was diagnosed with MS and I think people in the community already know that. Um, and it ended up being a misdiagnosis, but I was constantly for 12 years looking for the emergence of MS and whatever it was going to look like. And usually it was some sort of, sort of surface, initially some sort of surface pins and needles thing. Um, but I was constantly looking for it. And in that constant search and me looking for it, there was this weird thing that 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 came into my awareness where I would get this real tightness in my joints, mm. um, and that tightness in my joints always ended up with me getting like some kind of flu or cold, mm. and then it got to the point where that tightness in my joints is my check engine light coming on. Oh, you're under viral attack. It's time to like take it easy, go to bed. Yeah. So there's something in what you're saying about you know the psychology in relation to the physiology, I'm really caught up in my psychology. I wouldn't notice any of that stuff. Like there may be all sorts of cues coming from my biology that I have no sense of because of my stirred up psychology. So I kind of love what you're saying because it feels like, yeah, I have my own reference points around that. And that's the only reference point I have. I'm sure there are plenty of other ways that my body speaks to me, but that intelligence wants to inform me and keep me abreast of what's going on. But if my my psychology is really stirred up, it's like just another area that I, you know, that I neglect, constantly striving to do whatever I do, fix my psychology in a sense, whatever, you know, I, I aspire to on that level. But there are all these cues around us and it's like, it's in the biology, it's in our essential nature. And it's such a mm -hmm. fabulous thing to consider and, and to expand into. So I love this conversation. Yeah, I love that Angus because I I really think that one of the one of the greatest missing links or or misunderstanding is that we think that this idea of intelligence lives above the shoulders 
-hmm. And what I, what I really like to consider is that there is not a single aspect or atom in our body, or cell or, or bacteria in our body that isn't also intelligence. And if we can consider that, then, you know, what I, I find that when I or when anybody is really stirred up here, sometimes a great refuge is actually being able to drop into here. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes it's just so noisy in our mind. So we've got so many kind of um, hooky thoughts and, and things that are grabbing our attention and pulling us in. And sometimes to try and see through that can be really difficult and, and almost like an act of resistance. But if we can also know that intelligence is this, it's, it is the body, it is every part of us, then we can drop in and, and kind of hang out with the board of directors of intelligence of the whole, <laughs> of the whole universe right here within our body. And, and, and in a way, when we build that rapport, all of our bodies speak in a different way, but they speak in a way that we can understand. And so in your case, I guess you started to understand that like, okay, that, that tightness is kind of, that's a, that's a, a check engine light for me. And you could kind of know what it was pointing to. And when you start to respect and listen, you start to get more and more of those cues. And now we're in, now we're in relationship. And, um, and I think that that's sometimes or oftentimes a really overlooked aspect of not only this understanding, but also just in life. We, we, we love to do so much with our brains, not realizing that, that this body has so much to share and is doing so much heavy lifting in any given moment of time. And the fact that this body is made of bacteria, this body is made of viruses, this body is made of all of the things and has always been that way. And so the amount of intelligence that it can impart on us is far more than we can impart on it. But we oftentimes flip that around and we try and tell our body how it needs to behave and how it needs to be in order for us to be okay. And we oftentimes do that through, through food, through sugar, through caffeine, through nicotine, through alcohol, through through supplements, whatever. But what if we switched it around? And what if we could be really wonderful students of the vitality? What if we could be a wonderful student and just sit by and observe and listen as if we had no idea what sort of uh, wisdom and intelligence it could impart on us, but we could just be open to it and be willing to follow. Um, what I have found for myself and, and working with people is if we can do that, a whole new world of, of possibility in our health opens up for so many reasons. Mm -hmm. One, because we're getting um, new information. And another is because we've relaxed, we've allowed our mind to get quiet. And when that happens, our body gets quiet and our muscle tension decreases and our immune system uh, improves, and our digestion improves, the whole cascade of things, right? But, it, but sometimes it really starts by surrendering to our ideas about what needs to happen here, mm -hmm. and being a wonderful observer and student about what wants to happen here. Yeah, that's really profound. It, it reminds me of, um, the, I had quite a, uh, a slow learning curve in terms of what you're talking about. And it started when um, I was doing research in, uh, in Guatemala and I ended up getting parasites when I was there. And I came back to Canada and the, um, the Western doctors said there was nothing wrong with me and that, you know, you know, I don't know what they thought was going on, but I knew that I wasn't well and they said that they couldn't find anything. And so then I started to see a naturopath, which on one level was just, such an amazing thing to wake up to and to see that there's this whole other way of looking at health, whole other way of relating to um, my body and potentially like you're saying, listening to the wisdom. But I think 
probably more a reflection of my level of consciousness at the time, not maybe so much the naturopath, but I still kind of went to war with my body. And so she, um, you know, was, I don't think she knew that I had parasites. I think I found that out about 10 years later when we came here, but um, you know, there was all kinds of food elimination and, and all kinds of things that I was put on. And it wasn't, I wasn't tuning in the way that you were talking about, Mm -hmm. like listening to the wisdom. I was now caught up on following the rules that were written on this piece of paper and trying to get that right. Mm -hmm. And it felt like, like a lot of deprivation. And I remember, um, this is before I met you, Angus, but, um, you know, there was very, it felt like there was very little I could eat at the time. And so my boyfriend at the time, like, was kind of like figuring out like, what, what can you eat? And okay, I'll buy that. And so he, I was able to eat rye. So he bought this loaf of rye bread and some other stuff. I ate the whole <laughs> rye bread. <laughs> <laughs> and, and listen to it like it's crazy i'm but... surprised you didn't have a vitamin sandwich <laughs> 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 but it's like looking at it now like i can see how i wasn't listening <laughs> to my body's wisdom and that that was my wisdom to eat the whole loaf of rye bread where i would have probably felt very guilty that i'd eaten all that bread yeah. but it, it's like my body was speaking to me but i wasn't listening to it yeah. and maybe there were certain things that it was that I that were needed to be eliminated at the time, but the way that I was doing the letter of the law was working against me yeah. rather than for me. And I, I think that um, that I don't think I'm alone in that. So I'd love for you to speak to that. Yeah. Well, you know what comes to mind is when when I start to work with somebody, um, and if it's around nutrition, one of the first things we do is I I call it prep I call it preparation weeks. In preparation weeks are really it's just about learning to listen to your body. And it's just about learning to, um, I don't ask people to change anything, really. I just say, look, I want you to, to go home and I want you to continue to eat. And I want you to maybe consider um, eating foods that are closer to nature, but, but that's it, right? Maybe let's increase your water intake. But, but mostly what I want you to do is just simply observe kind of what your go-tos are. Simply uh, listen to what your body might be asking for that you haven't been aware of. And, and, and then finally, maybe asking the question, if I'm reaching for something, simply asking the question, what is a more natural or what is a, a, a choice that is closer to nature than the one I'm about to make? and see if there's actually more energy or vitality that you feel in your body around that. So it's really just listening. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's building rapport with the body. It's asking it versus telling it. It's um, working from a place of curiosity versus kind of putting things in from, from kind of just habitual reactivity. And what's so fascinating is after just a couple of weeks, so much of someone's own intuitive eating starts to come out because now they've just they've brought awareness around something where there was no awareness you know eating or nutrition was just a reactive thing i feel low on energy i'm going to eat or my blood sugar is low i'm going to eat or this is what i do for breakfast or lunch or dinner every day and so all of a sudden it begins to change only because we switched the direction of our, of our, of our looking, of our awareness. And from that place, a whole new conversation around, around food and nutrition can begin. And it's not so much about um, protocols as it is, as it is about uh, seeing what wants to emerge. And what you're going to find with anybody is the reason that there are so many diets out there is because there is something called biochemical individuality. And the three of us sitting here, we each have a a different chemical makeup, meaning food is gonna impact our body each differently. The same food will impact our body differently. And so to tell somebody that they need to eat this way or that way specifically, really kind of, it's a violation in in the wisdom of, of the body. And for some people that may work because we got really lucky and, and that, that diet tend, it just matched. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. but, but what's ultimately true is that when people get really curious and start to listen from within, they will naturally start to migrate towards foods that are richer and denser in nutrition that feed their body that feed the, the 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 immune system that feed the areas that need uh to be to be fed and repaired and so i um so i encourage people if you're looking for a protocol i ask you know what else could be true if you if if the best protocol was going to be the one that came from your body and maybe you don't know anything about nutrition maybe your whole life has been about simplicity and processed foods and this is kind of a completely new world to you that's okay i never i'll never forget the first day i ever walked into a whole foods i i, I took a big whiff and i was like this place smells weird i don't know what to do with any of these foods and i turned around and walked out <laughs> i mean that was last week <laughs> but 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 through curiosity all of a sudden i started like there was something about the smell of the soil and the naturalness that really wanted my body wanted to come alive and that was something that really drew me into that whole world this was so many years ago but but i encourage people to if we just simply begin to look and ask a different question of ourselves and ask our body to guide us and have some patience and some curiosity along the way most likely what's going to happen is is you're going to develop a, a way of nutrition that really, really resonates deeply with you. That's not going to be about willpower. It's going to be much more about the way your body wants to be empowered. And, and if we can let it lead, we'll find that so many times bacterial or, or gut imbalances get resolved just by willing to listen deeply. Now, some people get really discouraged. I'll say this right off. Some people get really discouraged at like, oh, that's, that's all you tell people about nutrition. Well, that's a found, that is such a, a powerful foundation that once that's in place, there are ways that we can then kind of go into specific areas to, to work on, on specific challenges. But without that foundation, it's really very difficult to work on anything. It, mm -hmm. It's kind of like, it's, it's like the understanding of the principles. It's, it's tough to see something new when there's no grounding. So in a way, working with nutrition in this way is grounding. And it brings us back to soil and it brings us back to nature and it lays that foundation so that we can then put our roots way down deep so that whatever storm comes in life, we have higher levels of resilience. And that is exactly what we're seeing now in this time of COVID. Mm -hmm. and, and the deeper our roots and the broader our roots and the more we're aligned with natural biological living, the more we'll find ourselves resilient in the face of virus, which are here also to help us evolve. I mean, it's an amazing, it's an amazing way. This is the way it's been since the beginning of time. And so, when we come from this idea that we have to domesticate everything, what, at, what ultimately happens is we begin to sterilize everything. Mm -hmm. And when we go and sterilize everything, we, we actually ultimately long-term are weakening the immune system. And, and, and so we want to be able to invite we want to be able to invite these things that are normal and natural and biological and, and of nature into, into our life and into our presence. But we also want to have a deep enough and broad enough root structure in our health and our foundation so that we can be a, a good symbiotic host and not let it be parasitic and take us down. Mm. You were looking at me because you're not going to throw all the hand sanitizer over the house. Is that what you go through you're going to go and now throw all the hand sanitizer out of the house well you just have a tendency to sterilize everything <laughs> <I do. laughs> 
<laughs> and and this time has sort of given you a green light to go ahead. And I, do I guess that. it has. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I really love what you're saying, um, and I, I mean, I love what you're saying also about how um, something that's emerging for me now is that I guess through this work I've always kind of like you know we talk about wisdom we talk about the difference between the rational mind the egoic mind and wisdom um and I always think about wisdom just like I always think of it think of it in psychological terms but in terms of what you're saying you're saying no that wisdom is evident at atomic level that wisdom is evident at a subatomic level that wisdom is just in it's infused in our whole being so if we're going to point towards wisdom and it's so hard to point to wisdom and articulate it it usually ends up with us talking about a feeling so that feeling can be intuition it can be a gut you know gut sense mm -hmm. of you know this feels like a truth so i feel like the nature of our work is to point people to that truth point people to t point people towards that wisdom but it's like i've always seen it in psychological terms but in a way it's like no it's the whole shebang yeah. my body is just one piece of glorious wisdom yeah. and i just have tuned myself to that and listened to it um and and i should be good to go and it's so interesting that we have this sort of rational conceptual mind that wants to you know wrestle away the controls and, and then follow those protocols yeah because this is something that's tangible that i can understand it's a map that i can read and follow um and then we we drift away from, the, from what is natural our own gps system which is not a psychological thing it's a whole body thing mm -hmm. um i just think it's just a really cool way to, to to look at it it's just that so that's not something new for me so thank you for that yeah <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate yeah. it yeah and i think too to also to to consider you know if we have illness and if we have pain and if we have challenge that too is wisdom you know, it, it, it doesn't mean that we've done something wrong. It doesn't mean that we should feel ashamed. It, that too is wisdom. And, you know, in some sort of way, I mean, if you think about it, a symptom is the body alerting us to something. That is intelligence knocking, just kind of tapping us on the shoulder. And if we are, if we are quick to judge it, if we're quick to, um, kind of storyboard about it, we oftentimes go to domesticating that pain very quickly or, or that sy symptom and trying to knock it out without actually kind of trying to understand what it is, where it's coming from, and what is ultimately the invitation that I'm, in, that I'm being invited to. You know, it's like if we're, if we're on a journey, if we're taking a car trip and we, we come to a closed road, it doesn't mean that the journey is over. It just means that we're going to take a detour. And that's what health challenges are. They're just, they're just detours. They're, they're taking us into a different realm that, we, that is the unexpected. And, um, and unfortunately, we, sometimes they're inconvenient. Sometimes they're difficult. Sometimes they're not only difficult for the participant, but for the entire family. And, and at the same time, there's also wisdom in that too, in that whatever journey we're up to, if we can know that in some sort of way, that this thing, this body of intelligence is on that journey too. And if, if we can be co-pilots to it, we can navigate more gracefully. So, and I, and I I wanted to share that Angus because sometimes, you know I I feel like sometimes in the in the principles community people have this understanding that if they get this grounding if they get this understanding that they'll never have they'll never have low moods and they'll never be upset and they'll they'll, they'll never feel discouraged or or whatever, but. You know, I think we all know that that's really not true. We, we, we've come to that place where we see, oh, you know what, I, I can still have discouragement and I can still have sadness and I can actually uh, be with it more gracefully. And, and, and it can be with me and I can be with it and, and it can move through. And I think that's the same with, with health and health challenges. Having a deeper understanding and better rapport with our body and learning to follow it doesn't mean that we're never going to have health challenges. Just, it just means that 
our capacity to move with those health challenges more gracefully and intuitively um, is, is intact and, and we can tap into it and, and, um, and let it take the heavy burden of the journey rather than, rather than us psychologically. I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Well, there's something that occurs to me to say, and I and I feel that, you know, there's a, there's, there is a certain amount of reluctance because I think this is something that I've been up against too. It's kind of, I guess, in these COVID times and having the odd scare here and there. Um, and, you know, you're kind of up against your mortality um, mm -hmm. or, or the idea that, you know, that you might not get through this per se. And so there's something in what you're saying um, about, you know, that intelligence doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to survive whatever condition I may have, but it's kind of like, there's something in your say in what you were saying made me think it was like, well, I'm taking one for the team here. You know, the team human race It's kind of like, if I'm a spiritual being having a human experience and actually on a spiritual level, we're all one, you know, in my human experience, I'm just part of the process of evolve evolution towards, you know, balance, towards balance and harmony. And, then, and, then, and if I could look at it that way, that would be comforting. But generally, you know, I get into my human experience and, it, and, you know, I feel fear and all those typical human emotions. So there's something around that conversation, which I'm really curious about and something that, you know, something in you, something in you, that, what, in what you said made me feel like, yeah, there's something around like, yeah, maybe I'm just taking one for the team, but we are evolving. We are evolving towards, you know, a better, a better tomorrow. Uh, and, and maybe that's why, you know, the virus is here to kind of steer us in that direction. It's not actually a negative thing. It's part of the process of evolution towards a, a more balanced and harmonic future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that I ultimately think that 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 that's true. If sometimes we may we may the, the virus is doing what the virus is doing. And, and our interpretation of that is kind of up in the air. And, and, and we may go in this direction over here, which may not initially be helpful in our evolution. Um, and then we will, we will wake up to that. And then we'll self-correct and we'll kind of go in the direction that's, 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 that's right. So yeah, I think viruses are wise. I think they are, there is nothing that isn't intelligence. I mean, I see so much, so much in this invitation from COVID. There's so much. With that, there is so much reactivity in the world right now. And there's so much divisiveness in the world right now. And there's invitation in that too. I have to remind myself of that because sometimes I get, I get a little disheartened and discouraged when I, when I look out in the world and I see people just so combative but if we really look at um what's on offer i mean just in in one example if we could see that part of what this invitation could be about is is being more supportive of one another and the fact that there are people who have immune systems that are compromised and they have comorbidities that, that, that make them uh, more susceptible to getting sick. And if we can realize that as one, as a, as a group of, as a big life force, then the whole conversation, just as an example, the conversation around masks go away. Mm -hmm. Because there are some people who uh, they are they are deeply susceptible, and and if I can assume that I'm walking around with a virus, if I just make that assumption, then I'm more than happy to put on a mask to protect those who can't protect themselves. And in a way, it's a it's a wonderful act of of compassion and empathy. Mm -hmm. um, that's a wonderful invitation. It's a wonderful invitation of love. It's an invitation of vitality. It's an invitation for connection. It's an invitation for respect. 
Um, but if we, un if we kind of take that in a different way, we'll take it as an invitation to promote our philosophical views and promote our, our ideals and, and, you know, not support each other. Right. Be divisive. Be divisive. But ultimately, there's, there's self-correction in that. I mean, you can only be divisive for so long before you're voted off the island <laughs> <laughs> or planet. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I think I mean I think if we can all um, well one thing you said also Angus there there's a there's there's a way in in some in some religions there's there's an interesting um, perspective where visualizing your death is something that is that is promoted and and I think part of that is just kind of coming to the the realization that 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 is something that is that is true for all of us, and um, and it allows us to become more neutral. And to some degree, when we have pandemics like this come to town, it's it's almost an invitation to surrender to neutrality. And and know that there is not a single one of us that. Um, that is immune ultimately. And so surrendering to the fact that I could uh, become, uh, become ill, become sick, that's a, that's a reality. But the other part of it is that um, if I know that in my heart that I am doing the best that I can, that I know how, to align myself with it, with nature and the intelligence within, then I don't really have any regrets around getting sick. I did the best I can. I did the best that I knew how. And uh, and if and if what this is really about is the evolution of human beings, so that they can be even more resilient and live life in freer ways without fear, then how cool is that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that was kind of what was emerging for me is that you know if I really harness this idea that I am a spiritual being having this human experience, really the more important part of the equation, that equation is my spiritual beingness, which is that at that level we are all one. You know, it's that sort of that's the the the, the famous non-dualistic conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but from that point of view, everything that you're saying is that yeah, you know what, I'm just if we're all one, my human experience is just promoting the, uh, you know, that idea of like, you know, we're, we're reaching out for, for a better tomorrow mm -hmm. where we, you know, we can do a better job of, of, of being healthy psychologically mm -hmm. and physically. Yeah. It's also a, a redefinition of health rather than seeking for a specific, uh, this is health and I've got to try and make that happen. It's recognizing the, what I hear you saying, the innate health is always there and that we can align with that and let it take whatever course that's going to take, that that's about awakening and consciousness. That's about um, that inner healing rather than achieving a specific physical world outcome. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I love that, Rainy, because you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, we, we have this idea that health is a state. Mm -hmm. And and it's not a state. Health is is a is a description or a spectrum that also includes the experience of illness. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and in a in a really profound way, if I never if I never have sadness, then how can I relate to someone who has sadness? Mm -hmm. And and so being physically challenged or having physical challenges allows us to relate at this point to the vast majority of the population. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at statistically, 54% of the population has comorbidities. And, and that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a huge percentage of the US population. And so having some sort of relationship with the fact of illness and the fact that, that illness is also not a static state, mm -hmm. right? It is everything is always moving and shifting and changing. 
And so my, my capacity to move in and out of these states allows me to connect and relate to more people in a, in a, more, in a, in a more profound way. So it is all, it's, it's, it's almost like, I mean, in a really philosophical way, if we, it, it's, it's like the intelligence trying to bring us together to show us that we're all, we're all the same. Mm-hmm. Beneath all of the costumes and the different ways that we hold ourselves and the stories and the ideas and the colors and all that stuff, we, we are ultimately the same um, if we choose to look at that level. Yeah. yeah, I really appreciate how you're able to hold this vitality health conversation within that philosophical framework and within that spiritual framework and to, um, you know, as you've talked about it as in conversations that we've had, like, look upstream from whatever the symptoms might be that we're experiencing, but really go back to that biggest picture and really start from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I mean, and, and just that big picture is also beyond, beyond this human body and includes nature and include, I mean, the, this, this conversation could go into in so many directions because it also includes food and it includes how we grow food and it includes how we actually uh, take care of our soil. And it, I mean, it's just such an amazing, it's like this, this lens that we could pull back forever mm-hmm. and ever and ever. And, and that's really just, that's the adjustment of consciousness or the expansion. It's mm-hmm. like we, every time we pull back, we see, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh. And, and every level becomes more impersonal. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and, and when health becomes impersonal, there's a lot of freedom in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so easy to take our personal health issues personally and get reactive to them. It's so funny. <laughs> It's extraordinary because it just, it again, just shows, shows how universal this understanding is. And I, and I can see that this conversation is really not in any way, shape or form different. So, you know, if we were like, you know, working on relationships, it's kind of like we're still pointing and talking about the same themes. Mm-hmm. You know, if you, if you can learn to not take, you know, your, your partner's behavior personally uh, and, and kind of seeing it from a personal input, the impersonal vantage point, then it's going to be so much healthier. Yeah. And you know, in the same way that you're talking about health in those terms too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the, same, in the same way, it's like your, your partner and their behavior says nothing about who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, my health challenge and the way it's behaving says nothing about who I truly am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I, if I make it, about me (laughs) it can be really discouraging yeah and then we're fighting me (laughs) (laughs) i know we've got to finish up but there's one um really cool thing that i heard on a video um i think it was christian northrup it was wayne dyer talking about it but i think he was referring to christian northrup and she was saying according to this research that the the connection it was pointing to the oneness and it was saying that the person uh growing vegetables in their garden that those vegetables would grow with different nutrients in it to fit what that person's body was needing oh yeah i think i heard that so it's like there was that level of symbiosis in in terms of the wisdom yeah of those plants which i mean i just think that's extraordinary yeah, I have never heard that, but that's not something I would, I would ever doubt. Yeah. I mean, that, how amazing is that? I know. I know. I don't, I don't have the link for the research, but it, it just kind of rings true to me that it could figure that out. Yeah, well, I mean, there's so much cool research in and around plants and growing plants and speaking to plants and connecting with plants and, and, and how they come alive and how they grow and, and flourish when we put our when we put our attention to them. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that's what 
really good farmers are really about is 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 great intention about bringing life into mm-hmm. the world mm-hmm. and um so that that doesn't surprise me at all i would love to see that research though yeah i'll see if i can find it really cool well scott thank you so much for spending this time with us it's always such a joy to to be with you on the on the personal level but also in terms of just what you point to on the impersonal level like i always feel like i'm getting fresh insights and my mind gets opened up to um taking my health less personally (laughs) As I always say, Scott Kelly is the real deal. <laughs> Love you, man. Love you guys. So, so good to be with you and, and hang out. Just love it. Love what you guys do. And I love how you so deeply impact people on so many levels. So uh, cheers to you both. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you so much.